Exactly. So I mean, I th- particularly the, the cow industry is very on very th- operating on very thin margins, as I'm sure people are aware. There's a lot of subsidies going on, so it's kind of very knife edge industry, and that makes it very kind of susceptible to disruption. And that's something we've looked at, as you mentioned, our previous report. And this is kind of our bread and butter. This is what we look at. We look at disruptions, technology driven disruptions. So this is something we feel particularly confident about. And does the the quality of the sugar of the material, because I think for now it will be mostly sugar. Yeah. And does that influence the outcome of the protein? Like, is it as in as in software? I mean, is it software as a service? Like garbage in, garbage out. What does that do to the microbe if you're feeding X type of sugar, or, or is is there um, what, what's happening on that space? It's a bit like a car, I guess. It's depending on if you're using the right fuel. It depends on what the car wants to use. I mean, if you put petrol in a diesel car, it's not going to work. If you put diesel in a diesel car, it is. So it depends on how the the microbe is tuned to take the input. And that's something that you can also program. So you're not just programming the outputs, but you can program the kind of inputs needed as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of microbes at the moment like to kind of bathe in the best possible sugar, the purest glucose, but that can change. It's just an efficiency question and a programmable question. How do we prevent this enormous concentration that we have now, especially in the, the CAFO industry in the US, where I think there are just a few producing all pork and just a few producing all chickens and they're actually mostly the same companies. And also in the, in the beef industry, there's an enormous concentration. Is there anything to say on that as a potential danger and, and what this movement could do for that? Yeah, so this is really part of the point of our report, right? We want to kind of alert people that there are going to be choices to be made with this technology disruption. And we really kind of advocate to ensure an open, and transparent, competitive market, you know, because we think that's critical to ensure competition. And what does this mean for the farmers that are actually mostly growing, if you look on average in the US, crops for animals? So what does this mean for rural rural America? Yeah, I mean, there are huge impacts. We, I think we forecast something like almost 500 million um, acres of land will not be needed in the way that it is now to produce crops. So it's going to create these huge opportunities for farmers. I mean, obviously, there's massive impacts such as land values could be decimated, right? They're going to be disproportionately affected by this impact. It's probably a likely a rapid collapse in value, but you know, which is something investors should take notice yeah. of because a lot of their models are based actually on land always has like their real assets. They always have value. Exactly. And, um, you know, we've seen a precedent for that land drop as well and value drop by more than 50%, I think in the twenties and thirties, and then also another 40% in the eighties. So this has happened. So you can see a kind of disproportionate effect of land values. 